The Gospel of Luke, Chapter 4. Today we're going to talk about something that every single one of us faces, whether we realize it or not. We all encounter moments of temptation, rejection, and self-doubt. Maybe it's in the form of a challenge that tests our strength, a rejection from people we hoped would support us, or a sense of being overwhelmed by our purpose in life. You know, but there is hope in these struggles. And today we're going to dive into the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, where we are shown how Jesus navigated these same trials. This passage is about more than just history. It's about practical wisdom that we can apply in our own lives today. We'll see how Jesus faced temptation, rejection, and ultimately step into his mission with power. Let's explore how we too can overcome obstacles and live with purpose, guided by the example Jesus set for us. Now, the temptation of Jesus. The Gospel of Luke chapter 4 begins with Jesus being led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, where he faces a series of temptations from the devil. Now, let's pause here. Jesus has been baptized, and the Spirit has descended on him like a dove. This is a high moment, a spiritual peak. But right after that, He's led into the wilderness, a place of desolation, isolation, and testing. Now, have you ever noticed how after a great success or a spiritual breakthrough, life seems to throw its biggest challenges at you? This is exactly what happens to Jesus. He's fasting for 40 days, and he's physically weak. This is when the devil shows up. But even in his weakness, Jesus teaches us how to respond to temptation with strength. Temptation number one, turning stones into bread. So the first temptation is simple. If you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. Now, Jesus is hungry. He hasn't eaten for 40 days. But his response is profound. Man shall not live by bread alone. And Jesus shows us that life isn't just about satisfying our immediate physical needs. There's something deeper. The Word of God is what sustains us. We can have all the material things in the world, success, wealth, comfort, but if our soul isn't fed, we'll always be empty. So think about that. In our moments of hunger, whether it's hunger for recognition, comfort, or success, We are tempted to take shortcuts, but Jesus reminds us that real fulfillment comes from trusting God and his word. Don't let your immediate needs overshadow your long-term purpose. Temptation number two, worship for worldly power. The second temptation is a bit more subtle. The devil shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and says, I will give you all their authority and splendor if you worship me. Now, it's the offer of power, but at a price. You see, Jesus would have to bow down to evil. And Jesus refuses, saying, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now, think about that. Jesus knew his mission was to become the king of kings, but not by taking shortcuts. The devil was offering him a counterfeit version of his destiny. But Jesus knew that true power comes not from compromising your values, but from serving God with integrity. So think about that for a second. In life, we're often tempted by shortcuts to success. Maybe it's cutting ethical corners, or compromising our values for financial gain, or seeking approval from the wrong places. But true success doesn't come from these shortcuts. It comes from staying aligned with God's purpose, no matter how long the journey takes. Temptation number three, testing God's protection. Finally, the devil takes Jesus to the highest point of the temple, and tells him to throw himself down, saying that the angels will catch him. 
Essentially, he's asking Jesus to force God's hand, to prove God's love and protection. But Jesus replies, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And he refuses to manipulate God's power to serve his own ego. Now think about that. How often do we find ourselves wanting to test God, asking for signs or proofs of his love? When life gets hard, we may think, God, if you really love me, you'll fix this right now. But faith isn't about manipulating God to do our will. It's about trusting his timing and his plan, even when we can't see the outcome. So, you know, temptation doesn't come only when we're weak. Sometimes it comes when we're on the verge of something great. Like Jesus, we can resist by remembering our deeper purpose and trusting in God's word not our immediate desires or shortcuts to success. Jesus begins his mission. After overcoming the temptations, Jesus returns to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. He goes into synagogues and begins teaching. People are amazed at his words, but then he comes to Nazareth, his hometown. Here he reads a prophecy from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, Jesus was declaring his mission to bring hope to the hopeless healing to the broken, and freedom to the oppressed. But how did his hometown respond? With doubt and rejection. They said, isn't this Joseph's son? They couldn't believe that someone they knew, someone so familiar, could be the Messiah. They were blinded by their preconceptions. Now this is a powerful lesson, because sometimes the people closest to us, those we've known the longest, are the ones who can't see the greatness God has placed in us. They're stuck in the past, remembering who we used to be, and they miss what God is doing in us now. So, think about this. When we step into our purpose, not everyone will understand or support us. Some people may doubt or reject us. Not because we're doing something wrong, but because they can't see beyond their limited view of us. But like Jesus, we must continue forward, trusting that our mission comes from God, not from people's approval. Jesus demonstrates his power. After being rejected in Nazareth, Jesus goes to Capernaum, where he begins to demonstrate his power of his mission. Now, he teaches with authority casts out demons, heals the sick, and performs miracles. Wherever Jesus goes, lives are transformed. Jesus encounters a man possessed by an unclean spirit in a synagogue. With a simple command, he drives out the demon, leaving the people in awe of his authority. This shows us that Jesus has power over the forces of darkness, both then and now. And if you think about it, when we step into our God-given purpose, we too can confront and overcome the darkness in our lives and the lives of others. We have the power to bring light to dark places, hope to hopeless situations, and healing to broken hearts. Jesus goes on to heal Simon's mother-in-law, who was suffering from a high fever. And he doesn't stop there. He heals many others with various diseases and casts out even more demons. His compassion and power are limitless. So think about that. We are called not just to talk about love and healing, but to act. Our faith should move us to bring healing, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual, to those in need. When we step out in faith, 
God's power flows through us to make a real difference in the lives of others. Now finally, even when people wanted to keep Jesus in one place, he knew he had to continue his mission. He said, I must proclaim the good news to the kingdom of God, to other towns also, because that is why I was sent. You know, sometimes people want to keep us in a box, comfortable, familiar, and predictable. But God's purpose for us is bigger than any one place or role. Like Jesus, we must keep moving forward, trusting that our mission is bigger than our comfort zone. So the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 is more than a story of Jesus. It's a roadmap for our own lives. It shows us that temptation will come, often at our weakest moments, but we can overcome by staying grounded in God's word and trusting his purpose for us. Rejection is inevitable when we step into our calling, especially from those who are familiar with us. But we must keep moving forward, knowing that our purpose comes from God, not from people's opinions. And power flows when we walk in our purpose. Like Jesus, we are called not just to talk about love and healing, but to live it, to bring hope, healing, and freedom wherever we go. So, as you leave here today, I encourage you to reflect. What temptations are you facing right now? What mission has God placed on your heart? And how can you step into the power he has already given you to make a difference in the world around you? You have, you have been given everything you need to overcome, to live with purpose, and make a lasting impact. So don't let fear, doubt, or rejection hold you back. Step forward in faith knowing that the same Spirit that empowered Jesus is with you, guiding you every step of the way. Thank you, and may you walk boldly in the purpose God has for you. Thank you, friends. Tomorrow we'll discuss the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 5. I hope you have a beautiful day. Talk to you then. Thanks.